my interest in lightning bugs started gradually. I've had the interest since I was a little girl. Every child loves lightning bugs, catching them, putting them in a jar, letting them go. I'm Lynn Faust, and some people call me the lightning bug lady. We had a cabin in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but that cabin had the synchronous fireflies all around it, and I watched it from childhood on. My mother-in-law, Emily Faust, coined the term the light show back in the 60s, and we were all busy hiking and minding babies and doing everything else, but on June night after dinner, she would suddenly kind of get our attention and go, okay, in 10 minutes, the light show will begin, and everyone needs to be on the porch. And when Emily said it, we did it. She was a fabulous lady. And uh, we'd wrap up in our blankets and get in the rocking chairs and face the hillside. And the light show would begin. And Emily had already figured it out. It started at about 9.30 every night, the first few weeks of June. And uh, we would sit there and watch the synchrony. And it was so beautiful. At the time, like most people, I felt like all lightning bugs were the same. You know, like there was one and they were everywhere, but we knew early on that these were flashing differently. So it first dawned on me then, it's like, we have something special here. It's always been a thing of magic and beauty, but it's something other people haven't seen. And so that began my long journey into where I am now, totally obsessive 26 years later. I started by approaching the park and asking if they realized we had a synchronous firefly. They said no, and they weren't real interested in coming up to see it. It took them several years. But then I went to UT and asked them, and they didn't understand. And so no one seemed aware of it. I've always liked science and nature, and I subscribed at the time to a, a magazine called Science News, sort of a digest. The cover came of the magazine in 90 one or 92, and the cover was a synchronous firefly tree in Asia. And so I picked it up, and I thought, oh, I better read this article. They might mention the Elkmont fireflies. And I read the article, and they didn't mention anything about the North America, except to say that in the Western Hemisphere, there were no synchronous fireflies. That kind of jolted me. I thought, well, we've been watching them for years. The name of the synchronous firefly, the scientific name is Photinus carolinus. And like the state of Carolina, it was first described from that state and it's in the genus Photinus. Each species of lightning bug either glows or flashes. And what we all are seeing on our summer evenings in East Tennessee, 99% of the time are the males, only the boys are we watching. They're the ones flying around giving a species-specific flash or glow. And some species only glow, which means they kind of glow and never go out, like our blue ghosts do that. And many of the other species actually flash, but each one has a special pattern that only his female will recognize. And so they speak through lights. That's their love song, back and forth to each other. The females are usually down in the leaves. You know, they'd be kind of down in here and they answer very quickly with usually a very small little flash where the males have these elaborate, particularly the Carolinas, the synchronous ones, have a very elaborate six flashes quickly and then six seconds of dark. And they repeat that pattern over and over. It's called a discontinuous synchrony. They're actually dark all together for six seconds and then they flash for three seconds rapidly and they repeat that all night long. The increase in crowds over the decades has been astounding to everyone, the park, myself, everyone. But by 2004, it was a circus. And there were whole buses of people, whole clubs, groups, churches were coming up, dumping the people out. And there was no rhyme or reason. It was word of mouth. The park never advertised it. We sure never advertised it. It made our research very difficult. Last year, I got close to 1,000 requests unsolicited by phone calls, emails, and a few knocks on the door wanting to know when to go see the light show or what flasher do they have in their backyard. And people just find me and I'll get emails from people that I will never meet going, 11 of us from Louisiana are renting an RV and we're coming to see the light show, when should we come? And this will be January. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, come sometime in May or June.
in order to have a great viewing night, a main thing is you don't want it pouring rain. Because if you think of how big a raindrop is and you think of how small a lightning bug is, they cannot fly in rain. Now, a misty night, that doesn't really bother them, but rain does. And there is a limit of if they get too wet, they have trouble flying. You also have to go the right night. And again, there's only three to five super peak nights per year. Their lives are so short. The average lightning mug, again, there's always exceptions, but they live two to four weeks and that's it as an adult. They come and they go and they most don't eat. They only show up to find a mate, lay eggs, and assure the next generation. That's the entire function of an adult lightning bug. And we had only watched it as a thing of beauty. And that's really different than when you're trying to explain to a scientist what it is you've been watching for 20 years. My 26 years of, of research and field notes has taken over the house, but we have lightning bugs in the freezer, lightning bugs on the counter. I have 26 years of spiral notes that I do ultimately type up, over 3,000, 4,000 pages of those, over 70,000 photographs of fireflies of all the different species that I've taken, and then you have to edit and do all those things. Lots and lots of hard drives backed up. I have finally written a book on lightning bugs for everyone. It's written for the layman, for the interested regular person. It is peer reviewed. It took me six years to write, reflecting 25 years, six years of field research. The book is called Fireflies, Glow Worms, and Lightning Bugs. These little fireflies have taken me around the world and I never set out on this journey. It just sort of happened. We do have firefly symposiums. I'm not the only oddball in the world. We're in every country. It seems like there are a few of us and we always find each other. I've gotten to travel really all over the world and present. Just came back from Taiwan. It was fabulous three weeks over there. And been to Thailand, Borneo, Cambodia, Malaysia, Monterey, California, which to me was a foreign country. That was one of my first symposiums. I was terrified back then. I consider myself to be, I have no idea. And everyone wants to put a name on me when I'm in the scientific world, which I'm in quite a bit. They don't know what to do with me. And so I do feel very lucky I have managed to straddle the scientific world and the world of popular just love of fireflies, the wonder and the awe of lightning bugs. Lightning bugs make good little ambassadors. People, if all they want to do is sit in their lawn chair in their backyard, if they've got a dark backyard with a nice wood lot, hopefully some water, a little grass that's not treated too heavily, they don't have to go anywhere. Just sit in their chair and enjoy what's in their backyard or their neighbor's backyard. And so you don't have to drive to the Smokies to enjoy lightning bugs and the magic of the twinkling summer evenings, although the Smokies show is something I wish everybody could see at least once in their life. But they're all around us. You just have to turn the lights out.